Tony Brewer is treasurer of the Writers Guild and a poet, event producer, voice actor, and live sound effects artist. He is executive director of the Spoken Word Stage at the 4th Street Arts Festival, and his books include The Great American Scapegoat, Little Glove and a Big Hand, Hot Type Cold Read, and Homunculus. He has produced and recorded for the literary programs Books Unbound and The Linen of Words on WFHB Community Radio and Anthology and The Poets Weave on WFIU Public Radio. And has won awards from the Kansas City Here Now Audio Fiction and Arts Festival and the Indiana Society of Professional Journalists. He was made a Kentucky Colonel in 2012 for his live sound effects work. Tony has been offering poetry on demand at coffee houses, museums, cemeteries, churches, bars, and art and music festivals for over 10 years, and he is one third of the poetry performance group Reservoir Dogwoods. Hey, everybody. Uh, so this was actually, this is actually the 10th year that the Writers Guild has been producing uh, work for the spoken word stage at the 4th Street Arts Festival. So this is a bittersweet process we're going through in order to provide some content for the um, 4th Street Arts Festival website, but we're thrilled to do it. We're, we're always glad to be a part of it. Um, I feel like we're really, over time, have become uh, an integral part of the festival and the tapestry of uh, Bloomington arts patrons who love coming back to the Poetry on Demand tent and the performance tent every year. And we're sorry we can't be with you in person, but we will be with you again, absolutely. Um, so here's a few things. Um, this is about a uh, trip I took to Maine many years ago now. This is called Down East. Somewhere around here, Paul Stuckey has started, a, excuse me, Down East. Somewhere around here, Paul Stuckey started a radio station that has played Puff the Magic Dragon 24-7 since 1968, except for break-ins from Democracy Now! and the Hightower Report. People from Boston are called mass holes. Limp shedders in a convenience store tanked too long are yesterday's pound. Ask a local, lived here all your life? And he'll answer, not yet. Such happy yellow rubber trousers with booties attached and suspenders extending out of a hang-down mustache as dark and downturned as the mouth underneath. He's a watercolor of a wharf, stacking cages and banding claws and thinking about his manicured ex-wife's painted nails and mouth, how, he, how she hated his Irish music, and boy, that was a deal breaker. He could have just not let her get that close instead of running all the way to Maine to escape after the divorce, but the sun isn't hiding when it doesn't show its face. A milky pearl and clam-colored skies. Here comes a squall. Snap. That's how the weather works here. A rock-bound smugness saying, you just don't know the world like we do. Thumbs under suspenders like tongues on long vowels dying at the back of the throat. A fish slides easily through the hand when the fins prick like quills when you try to hold it fast and scale and clean and gut it. He prefers claws and armor boiling in a pot and putting up a good fight with a hammer and tongs and a long buttery fork. Imagine trying to live here without synthetics, all oil skin and seal skin and real skin against wet wool dried over a smoky fire and in another time, blubber. Fat people rich, now fat people poor. The boat is not his life. It's got a name, like a wife. And he loves every catch he dumps on her deck, writhing like a sequin dress she's not clean enough to wear, so it just lays there, all pretty on the bed. A radio's the only thing still running when a nor'easter knocks the power out. He cranks it like a phonograph, and out comes Elvis Costello, pretending he's Pete Seeger, doing a terrible Burl Ives. All that tremolo wheezing forth, he'd almost rather hear the news. And off the coast, a foghorn sounding all night, all year, though no one lives there ever since the keeper passed away, remote controlled since 1958. He can tune a violin by it, G sharp, and the waves lapping the granite beach clean are whole rests.
Uh, I want to do a couple from my latest book, Homunculus. Um, <clears throat> this came out last year and um, it has continued to resonate as we move forward in space and time in ways that really um, surprise me in unexpected ways. But um, here's a couple of dark ones for you. They're pretty short though, so it's okay. Excuse me. Uh, this is why we will never get over it. They are out there who wronged you and inside sometimes you. Revenge builds wardens acting like guards who want paychecks and safe houses, but do not live there. Administrative judgment and managed expectations are above my pay grade. Recidivists think like you, different this time. Baby, I love you this time. Killing to come home, but do not live there. Rehabilitation is a nice idea. Never let go your justice drive. Cruelty gets results, information, respect. History, it's autopsy. What we find inside is never not children. What's it like to be wrong, unfixable, untrue? The waiting period for revenge is a sentence. We are out there and down in it. Uh, and this is, can I do that? Sure, I can. So I'm kind of looking more at you. <clears throat> uh, this is also from Homunculus. This is called Cross. Another truck stopped. No papers? Walk. Brown water, milk jug. Freedom from missile. Get there in the sweet by and by. You got car and papers. You started this whole mess. Another load of children, movies teach everything. Spring, always winter at checkpoints in the dark. Dogs and hoses turned on anything burning. Sometimes men stay home to fight or are the fight. We meet on that beautiful shore, ocean devours, deposits with invisible hands, fresh suits and all belongings snailed on mother backs. Let us in. Let us out, let us go. A dozen miles makes camps sprung upside homelands, no bombs carpet. We lay them like eggs on courthouse steps when we meet in the streets eye to eye. I'm gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna do uh, two more. This one is uh, <clears throat> relatively new and uh, I call these Rona poems. These are poems that have been written during the lockdown. Um, this would have been back in April. And um, <clears throat> this was inspired by um, a, a good friend of mine, David Osman, gave me a chapbook of poems by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. And it had um, one of his better known poems called um, Pity the Nation in it. And I was really struck by it, especially the early on in the lockdown when things were, I mean, things were uncertain now, but, you know, two, just a few weeks into it, nobody had any idea how long anything was going to last or, or anything. So super, super uncertain. And so Pity the Nation has um, a little epigraph saying um, after uh, Khalil Gibran. And so this is called Pity for Sale after Ferlinghetti after Gibran. Pity the bee who has no country, its fuzzy swollen appetite and hardwired love of candy. Pity the window gladly accepting so many waves of heat and hand fogged with condensation of desire. Pity the vegetable in its untouchable packet disguised as itty bitty seeds that are mere possibilities. Pity the failed backup and make it new. Pity the ambulance, so lonely it stalks my next door neighbor twice this year alone. Alone. Pity the billionaires in love with zeros. No, screw those clowns right in the zero. 
Pity the worker who identifies with a king. Pity the tree dragged down by sweet honeysuckle, the red buds pinking the woods, telling us it is time, time. Pity the time it takes to feel, the time it takes to unfeel, to unlearn, to unlove, to unseal. Pity our ranks and forms, a slot for everyone when we all would be better off marked other. My country, tis not insane, but copes horrendously. Sweet land, sweet liberty, ask any busy bee. And uh, my last one is a longer one, a little bit longer. And um, so no poetry on demand at 4th Street this year, which I'm definitely sad about. Um, but, uh, because I love occasional poems, poems that are written for occasions. And so I wanted to share a longer um, occasional poem that uh, I was asked to write on behalf of the Buskirk Chumley Theater. Actually, when uh, Dan Danielle McClellan, the outgoing executive director, um, was, was on her way out, she asked me to write a poem for a fundraiser uh, for the Buzz Chum back in January, which seems like five years ago now, but it was just January. And so this is what I came up with. This is called Buzz Chum Ode. Can you hear it? The theater tonight, quiet as snow. Weathered brick building in a silly old big in the britches town, kept alive and kept up in the night by the Indiana sign, conjuring dreams just over from the fish head courthouse beyond where cornfield shadows reach. Old because history is constantly remaking itself, reinventing all who enter past ticket takers, tearing stubs and a shushing of ushers. Shh. Can you hear it? theater packed to the rafters with memories of thousands of ballyhoo late nights and bloodshot mornings flashbacks to the last track spun in its inclusive club directorial cue to cue to tech to dress and the engineers check one check two check check seven seven sibilants check one check two check check every sunday morning at church and it has heard the prayers of many and that memorials for frank Anne Marie, Bill, Sophia. And it has heard the curses after punctured water main box office gushers and beat up lost birds flapping into the, into the facade, the attic, the offices, and so many cardinal holiday showy, foggy, hazy fire alarms. It's what we do, us artists, entertainers, and producers, and management material whose name is up in lights or all access badge or merely printed on a paycheck earning a living in the business called show. We work, we hustle, we bend knees and break legs, rock the rock out of limestone and roll away the seats when it's room we need to dance. We who pull out all the stops, long and hard and shifts throughout the night. Us roadies rolling amps up and down ramps and ghostly stage managers jangling carabiners of keys, calm and on edge and couldn't care less, living from darkness to darkness and in darkness dressed. We work it, we romance it, we create reality and enhance it. We steep in the misery of drama and soar on the uncontrollable guffaw of comedy, us loudmouths and class clowns who feed on this, we who trod boards and get off book, who strum and sing and drum on songs that mend or break your heart, posh poets laureate and radical queer slammers, laugh riots and techie TED talkers, new ingenues and farewell tours, subtle acoustics and, electri and electrified bombastics, both the budding and the big name star, resplendent Miss Black and Gold pageant queens and kings of campus in the house and pride folks shaking dust off the runway, all enter under effervescent marquee galaxy of red carpet Oscar poses. So many jolts to theatrical joists on booming lotus nights, 
dozens of drummers drumming and balafons and umbiras thrumming and keening fjordic harmonies spilling out of our seats and rows down the aisle and out into Vazen Street as a marching band makes a parade of us. Can you hear it? No mere building. This theater houses dreams of tens of thousands of performers and workers and patrons only decades can contain. Locals and out-of-towners, rabid fans and quiet wallflowers talked last minute into going, come on, it'll be great. The buzz chum, quiet for once tonight. But in that silence, the echoes of thunderous applause. Can you hear it? It's all yours. Thanks.